So guys, on this episode, we're headed to a buddy's house to pick up a 1959 Willys CJ3B Jeep. Now we bought this Jeep completely sight unseen, other than just a few pictures that he sent to us over Facebook Messenger. Now the story that we got behind it is that this thing's been setting up for quite some time now. He's really unsure why it was parked or even if it was running when they parked it. So we're hoping we can get it back to the shop, dig into it a little deeper, and find out that this girl still has some life left into her. Well, kind of nice not having to dig out 30 pounds of rat's nest right yeah. off the bat. Huh? See what you got to work with right as soon as you open the hood. A little old four cylinder. I think it's what they call a little hurricane, a little 134, similar that's in that little Willie's mail jeep we've oh, got. Yeah. But, I don't know, plugs don't look too old on this side, so that's a good sign. Everything looked to be there. Plug wires are fine. I mean, as far as I can tell, they're not all chewed up or anything. So. Everything's here. I don't know if we got, can check the oil in it. That's got antifreeze in it. Oh, wow. I was not expecting that one bit. Kind of thin, ain't it? Yeah, kind of thin. What's it smell like? Gas. Really? Doesn't have any taste. <laughs> Try to take that off. Screwdriver, I guess. Wonder if it'll. Of course. It's just slipping there. Water pump's not stuck though. I guess let's pull these plugs out and try to get on that crank and see if it'll turn over. Okay. I mean, that's. <laughs> we know our <laughs> luck here lately, everything's been stuck. So right. I'd rather know that that was something we can mark off. You got a 5H or a uh, 1316? Uh, fingers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Took them out by hand. It's going to be the uh, the big, yeah, thirteen sixteenths, and they're all just finger loose. Mm hmm. Mm. Why is that? Now one I'm going to have to take out. I'm just gonna spray a little PB blaster down in there to start off with, okay. just to give it a little, or some oil to squirt down in there, whichever one. Just to give it a little slippage. Assuming we're not in gear, right? It might be it, but it feels I don't want to go in gear, nothing. It's got it right there. See, it won't go in gear or anything. It's kind of like it's just stuck in neutral. So we'll have hmm. to address that. Right. Surely it's. The clutch does go down. Nothing that way. Lift in the whole motor. <clears throat> Try to back this other direction. Well, I hate that. It's like it's just, they've just been following us here lately. <laughs> you can try that. Mm -mm. <clears throat> we're gonna have to let it set. 
Well, I guess we'll get some vinegar or diesel or something down in them cylinders and let it, let it set a day or so. Yeah. We can go ahead and pull this valve cover off too just to see what it looks like on the top end. Might not hurt to drain that oil as well and make right. sure there ain't no water or anything in it. Kind of crazy, I noticed this thing has power steering on it. Oh yeah, sure enough. Well, that wouldn't have been factory. No, it doesn't look like a factory bracket anyway. I wonder with the plugs being finger loose or finger tight, if someone hadn't already tried to put something down in there. Right, yep. Flat blade. Bet I'm gonna have to pull this linkage off here. One good thing about it, it's got nice little work tables here, don't we? Yeah. Bolts were coming through. Yeah. I mean, there's even all that still up in on top of the head. Huh. Crazy. Where's the other valves? <laughs> I don't know unless these has the intake valves in the head and the exhaust valves down in the block like a flathead would be. That almost sense. has to be. That's the only right. thing I can figure. It ain't gonna run off just four valves. <laughs> Got to have something to let fuel and air and, and let all that combustion out. Right. Weird. So now that we've dug into this thing a little deeper, we found out that it is indeed locked up just like the last, feels like 20 we've worked on here. So the spark plugs were only put in there finger tight. So that's a little scary. Maybe someone knew this was locked up. They've already messed with putting stuff down into the cylinders and didn't come to any kind of uh, headway on it. So uh, we're gonna just try to put some vinegar or some diesel, some Marvel mystery oil. We've tried just about every kind of solution there is and none of them have worked great for us. So we're gonna get something down in there. Hopefully that allows it to break loose where we don't have to pull the engine out to tear into it farther. Uh, up underneath the valve cover, it really doesn't look that bad up underneath there. So that's a good sign. If we can get this to turn over, uh, we can just move on to the next problem from there. Yeah, like, that is super thin. I thought I seen water either. Yeah, a little bit. Not a, it should have separated if there was a lot, you know. Right. Actually not as bad as I figured it might be though. I think we probably just go ahead and put some diesel in that block, let it set. Because if that vinegar breaks through, those cylinders is gonna mix yeah. with good oil anyway, so right. that crank wouldn't hurt to soak in something that'll clean it a little bit more. But hopefully it's just stuck in the pistons. Just a waiting game at this point. Right. So it's been about a week now we've let this thing just sit. Uh, we've even rigged up basically our bar that we've got down on the crankshaft here. Uh, we've got it strapped down to the wheel hub there with just a little bit of pressure, hoping that over time, just that vinegar setting in there will help it to break free. So we're about to dig back into it and hopefully find out that we have made some progress. Just to kind of give you a little run around on this Jeep up close here before we dig in too far. We did find out that it does have a power steering setup, uh, which is pretty cool, but 
but being a Jeep this small, it probably wouldn't needed a whole lot of help, but you can see where they had to cut this grill here for the power steering lines to come down through into that uh, steering box right there. Now, if you notice, this, this Jeep has kind of a taller grill here and also what they call a tall hood. So this is a CJ3B, the B meaning that it had a taller hood on this model right here. So pretty cool. You don't see a whole lot of this style of Jeep running around. At least I haven't come into them a whole lot. Uh, on the sheet metal here, it's in really good shape for how Jeeps are normally around our area. Now I've had a bunch of CJ5s and normally they're rusted plumbing too right here. I guess it's just a weak point on the design. This one here is in pretty good shape. Uh, did have a brand new gas tank up in here, so that's a good sign. Uh, you can tell this steering column, it's not an original. It's been switched out with a newer model Jeep here. Uh, kind of got a busted up windshield there. No seat here. A terrible passenger seat over there. Once again, the sheet metal inside here, we've got a spare tire, but up underneath here, well, we do have a little bit of rust right there, but uh, that's definitely very easily to be repaired. Uh, do have our tailgate, lights back here. This side's basically the same. Pretty good shape. All the tires are holding air, and most importantly, all the wheels are rolling, so none of the brakes are locked up. So if we can't get this motor to turn over by the crank there, we'll try to get this uh, shifter, which is stuck right now. It's stuck in neutral, so we may have to work on it to try to get it to go in gear. But if we can get that to go in gear, then we can just rock the Jeep back and forth in gear, and hopefully the engine will break loose after that. Still nothing. Still huh? nothing that way. Let me try this other. See this vinegar at the tops of the cylinders there? It looks rustier. Hmm. Let's try back the other way just for the fun of it. Uh, I'm losing the nut. Right. Well, that's not good. No. As tight as that thing stuck, I don't know that even getting it in gear would be, and rocking it would do any good. Right. But it would be more sudden, or that's more just a little slow pressure, getting it in gear and rocking it back and forth both ways. Right. Well, I kind of messed with it the other day, and it's. It's stiff, but it, it will go in, I guess, first and reverse. It, oh. Yeah. Won't go in third. Oops. And then, I'd rather get it in. Right, one of the higher gears. Huh. I, I said it may be, can... but I think it's. Is it for sure going in? Yeah, it seems like it down there. Yeah. Yeah, let's try that, I guess. Pull this off just so it doesn't fall and make a bunch of noise. <laughs> I think we're just sliding across the concrete. Right, aren't we? yeah, I've noticed the back tires are sliding. It ain't even trying up here. It's not enough weight back there. I know it. Yeah, it's supposed sliding to across the floor. One of the things that's our advantage is it's light that we can do that, but disadvantage because it's too light. Man, I'd have never thought that it had been that stuck. You know, I don't know. All these spark plugs have rust where it's cupped there, and I just wonder if they didn't, from them being not in there tight and that the hood was left open, if it rained. You probably filled those things up. And then with it having the valves down there too, all those could be rusted as well. True, yeah. Because that water would have got down on that. I hope not. I mean, the only way you'd really know on that is to pull that head off, which I really don't want to do, but 
Try it one more time. I don't know if out of the two gears we got, which would be better? Let this light. The one that works, I guess. Yeah. Huh? I'm ready when you are. Not that one. It ain't trying. Try it the other way? I guess. <sighs> Did enough to make me dizzy. <laughs> well, I don't know that waiting, I mean, unless we wait a long, several months. Right. I don't think it's gonna do us much good. We don't really have several months to wait. <laughs> I'm gonna pull that head off. If we can find a head gasket. I don't, really, I don't really want a chance going back with an old head gasket after the last one. Let me see if I can find a head gasket. Doesn't look like that one will be too hard to pull off. The manifold on the exhaust is actually just mounted to the block there. So I think mainly just pulling loose some hoses. You know, we'll have to catch that coolant and stuff, yeah. but it's just scary. We've got decent looking coolant, decent looking spark plugs, a new gas tank. It's like someone had plans to use this, right, Yeah. but why is it locked up so solid? You know, did it get, were they, you know, driving in and overheated and seized up or did they just have to walk away from it? And that's right. an issue. Yeah, it's not just a hunging, hung, no, it's, it's, it's locked. It's stuck pretty good. Let me see what I can find on that head gasket. Okay. Crazy how good it looks up here on this top end, though. I know it, it's. I don't know if it's crazy or scary. Things are long. Sure. They don't look bent. They do look a little rusty. Yeah, there's something on that one for sure. It's just rust on the outside. I thought it was rusted through. Some of those are tight. I don't think there's been one that we've messed with lately that's been stuck. We haven't had to take the head off on. Yeah. Like every one of them. Look at, me. Look at that gasket there. <laughs> yeah, that don't look right, does it? Mm -mm, looks like it's shrunk in and... Huh. That's weird. Yep, bet she comes off now. Might just leave it down in I'm there to come to. out all the way. Wish I can't get it, so I'm gonna have to... Got it. Ooh. Pretty rough looking. Yeah, them valves look bad too. What does the bottom of the head look like? Ooh, that one right there. That valve there, I don't know. Pretty rough, ain't it? Stuck open. Huh, that's gonna be our main yep. problem, I bet you. Wait, the third one, this one here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That looks pretty nasty. It is nasty. 
Yeah. I don't know what that. Like you say, it's kind of oily. Yeah. Ugh. There's no telling because that one's that one's wide open. Yeah, it could be just the way the the cam is on those right. though. But I don't know. I don't know. Do we want to just grab the shop back and clean that out of there to see what we're working with, other than? Swamp water? Swamp water, yeah. That's going to be the easiest thing to... Oh, wee, wee, wee. You feel that? That is bad. Oh, very bad. Yep. I don't know, that's salvageable. <laughs> Let's grab that vacuum cleaner and see how it cleans up. It's only the top. The cylinders go way down in there. It's a top inch and a half. It's still really rusted there. But down below that, it's not that bad. Right. You'd yeah. have thought the piston would have been up to that point right there. But I don't know if that'll clean off or not. But like I said, at least down in there. And the rest of them, I think that's going to be our main problem. I think so. The rest of them ain't that bad. And that's the one that the intake valve is stuck open on. Right. So I bet you hood was open, some water come through the carburetor area, maybe through that, that gasket, gasket yeah. area or something, and filled that cylinder full of water there. Yep. So we'll just have to start cleaning it up a little bit more. Might have to hone that just a little bit, but I think we're only going to be fighting one piston though, rather right. than yep. several. I think so. Hopefully. <laughs> but then again, I never thought we were going to have to I did think this would be stuck more, more or less have to pull it apart. So now that we've got this head pulled off the block, it looks like we're probably only going to be fighting one cylinder, the third cylinder back here. Now, as you guys can tell here, it is just extremely rusty, the top inch and a half, two inches on here. So, I mean, you can just feel the grime and rust on that. These other cylinders uh, really aren't so bad. So hopefully it's just going to be this one we're going to have to fight. Now, once we pulled that head off, we noticed that the intake valve was open on that cylinder as well. So more than likely the hood was left open. It got rained on. It poured down the carburetor. Maybe it was that intake gasket between the carburetor and the intake that allowed some moisture to come in. But somehow a lot of water got into that cylinder. So now we're just going to have to wait it out, clean it up a little bit more, hopefully start working it back and forth. Now if we can get it to work loose, we'll put everything back together and basically start off where we started to begin with in the first place. I think these ones will be going up, but I'll give them a little. I feel a movement in that one, Lance. Is it moving? Yeah. Spray it a little bit more with some PV blaster. It's probably just going to be slow. I'm almost positive I'm feeling yeah. some movement there. Yeah. Moving? Something's turning. Not there. Huh? Nothing there, but on that one, it's. Trying to see if I can keep an eye on the the pulley. Think so? I'm going somewhere. Let me grab this light and check it out. See if I can see if it's moved in the cylinder. Uh, yeah, I think so. Look back in there. See what you think. Yeah. It's moved so. about a quarter of an inch, yeah, ain't it? A little more, yep. Let me try to clean that. It's kind of nasty looking.
Yeah, it's moved. These ones be coming up and those ones are going down. Ready? Yep. I can watch you move yep. out of the corner of my eye there. Well, that's good. Praise God. Yeah, I'm watching it turn down there. Okay. Almost made it to the top. I'm going to have to re... Oh, man. It does look rough. I think once we get this all the way down, need to, we need to clean it again. Yeah, because it's going to hit that going back up. Yeah, I don't want it to break one of those rings. Turning it by hand now, ain't I you? I think so. Yep. yep. Cool. Okay, yeah, let's clean out. out. Yep. Let's clean out that cylinder really good, and then try to work it back down. Now that we've got this thing slowly turning over by hand, we're just going to go ahead and pull the starter off as well. Uh, be sure that it's cleaned up nicely and everything's working on it. That way, hopefully, we can pop it back on there, be able to turn it over with the starter. It'll turn over a lot faster, and hopefully, allow this thing to turn over a lot easier. <laughs> Speeding up a little bit, yeah. ain't it? Don't you see it's not completely got all on this piston here. I'm trying to some of the dry spots there. I'm hoping that transmission fluid will help clean up those rings a little right. bit. <laughs> Looks like all the <laughs> All the valves are opening and closing yep. like they should on this part, so that's good. I think it'll turn over a lot better too once we get that diesel out of the block. Right. Get some oil, oil down in there. Something that's made to move, slick it. I think we can just kind of keep working it a little bit, and then I guess the next thing is we need to go ahead and make sure get our valves working on the head there, because I know we got at least that one that's stuck. Get those valves working and then putting it back together, I guess. Right. Try it out here See again. See what it does. Turning over good now. Did you did you see how that back that fluid's coming up and it's kind of and dropping back down in there? Uh-uh. Kind of watch it there. Oh yeah. Kind of making a wall yeah. and falling mm -hmm. back down. Yeah. I wanted to try to get that head, get, I mean, get those valves working on that head. That way we can put it back together. Alrighty. So on the head of this engine, as I stated before, uh, it only has the intake valve. So the exhaust valves are actually in the block. We found out all of them are opening and closing the way they need to be. Now, if you see right here on this very rusted top of that uh, part of the head right there, that valve is stuck open. So a lot of water come down through the carburetor and just cause this valve to stick open there. Um, so what we're going to have to do is just try to take some air, clean that up the best we can, and then just take a small hammer and try Try to work it back and forth with a little uh, PB blaster and stuff like that. Now you got to be very careful that you don't bend there or break this valve because if you do that your engine's never going to run right. So we're just going to try to take it easy, uh, clean it up just a little bit, work it back and forth. Hopefully none of these other valves are sticking but we'll go ahead and check them while we're at it as well. So I believe we've got most of these intake valves where they're not sticking any longer in the head. Uh, we're just going to try to keep cleaning up on it as best we can. Also clean up the top of this block around the exhaust valves on it. Now we'll go with back with a new head gasket, uh, basically put this head back on the engine, torque all the head bolts back to spec, throw that rocker arm on there, and hopefully find out that all of our intake valves are opening and closing, nothing sticking, and then we'll be able to move on to the next step from there. <laughs> Up oil too, so yeah. that's good. Yeah. Everything looks to be moving pretty good. Oh. 
think we're back to where we can start putting it back together. Yep. So now that we've got the top end put back together on this engine, uh, it appears to be turning over and sounding the way it needs to be. Uh, we put new oil in here, new oil filter as well. Uh, we see that our oil pump is pumping it up here to the rocker arm, so that's good. And all of our intake valves seem to be opening and closing the way they need to be. Uh, we still got to throw the carburetor back on there, but since we have it off, uh, we're just going to go ahead and have Dad clean it up while it's there and replace that carburetor gasket. Now I'm going to go ahead and tackle on the ignition system here. And what this Jeep has uh, up underneath this distributor cap is actually going to be uh, what they call a points and condenser system. So uh, this is your condenser and this is your little points right here. As you can tell, they are extremely corroded up right there on the tip, which is very common for something that's been setting a while. So we'll go ahead and replace these uh, points and the condenser. It's just too easy not to put a new rotor button on there. And then hopefully we'll be able to turn this off. Over. It'll be getting a little fuel, getting a little spark, and hopefully getting a little power. Oh, it's coming out of the bottom of the carburetor there, though. Well, uh, it's probably that that uh, pump down there. And that it was it was nasty down there. And I tried yeah, to clean it's the best I could. out about as much fast as I can put it in there. We'll just see what it does. Ready? Uh, yeah. Our wire come no. off. <laughs> I, I seen something move and I didn't realize. I have never seen one crank up uh -uh. that quick. Nope. I was not expecting that at all. I think you could have kept it running, but our probably so. Coal wire jumped off there. Let's try it one more time. Not really even smoking that much. No, that's what I thought. I thought well, the thing ought to. It may pop off again. Let's see if I can get it a different way here. Well, that's good. Here we go. Hard to idle it with that, yeah. ain't mm -hmm. it? Yep. And unfortunately, I think that carburetor may have to be taken back off and rebuilt yeah. if that's yeah. leaking that bad. It's something in there, a seal of some sort is yeah, dry rotted it, away or something. Everything that was in there was bad, shape. bad shape, yes. I think we can pick up a rebuild kit, probably ain't 20, 30 bucks. Get some fuel, get us a fuel tank ran to it somehow, rather if we gravity it to it or put our probably just put our little electric fuel pump in right. line yeah, somewhere the easiest, yep. and then get it outside and see if she'll go in gear I guess. So now that we feel like we've got everything pretty much buttoned up we're going to go ahead and push this Jeep outside and see if she's able to actually drive under her own power. Now on the carburetor we had to take a little bit different approach we were going to go ahead and rebuild this one but we just couldn't get a rebuild kit here in time uh, so we ended up finding one that was pretty similar off of an old AMC Pacer pulled it on there and we've got it working great on that. Now on our transmission we actually had to pull the top side of this shifter off uh, it was stuck in a new neutral when we first found the Jeep. Uh, Dad got it working where it would go from reverse to first, but never could get it into second or third. So I pulled it apart down here inside the transmission. It was super rusty, had a ton of water in there. So I cleaned all that out, put some new gear lube up in there. And I think I have the transmission shifting the way it needs to be, but second and third are still a little questionable there. Now, as far as fuel goes, uh, we ended up using this uh, factory new gas tank that was with it whenever we bought it. Uh, uh, Dad put a little piece of plexiglass over the uh, where the pickup tube would be so now we can see our fuel level and of course we capped it off with an old spray paint lid for our cap there so uh, we're going to go ahead and try to give it a go. All, like I said all of the wheels are rolling none of the brakes are locked up but also none of the brakes are working so not really sure what it's going to take to get those up and going uh, but we're just going to try to hop into this thing see if it goes in gear and see if we can just kind of drive it around the lot. You want to try and help me set this windshield down. 
was afraid it'd fall, but it doesn't look like it would have, huh? Oh, yeah. Got to get it. A little bit better view here. <laughs> Let's see what she does. See how she cranks. Come on. A little bit of a rattle in that transmission area. I'm surprised there's not more than this, just a rattle. Yeah. I don't hit anything. Well, she is moving. Should have put a seat in here. It's hard to see up over all this stuff. pretty good yeah I'm definitely gonna have to get a seat though <laughs> got that little spot right there that kept poking me I oh, thought yeah. I was gonna bust the windshield out it was flopping around like crazy yeah but yeah not bad I never could get it in second gear it died on me when I got out there there's something that's haywire inside that transmission right like I said this as rusty as that thing was in there that was yeah terrible. I thought maybe just when that gear roll would get worked around in there but we may have to tear into it a little deeper right. before we do got to make the victory lap though Oh, that try to make it down to the shop? <laughs> yeah, it's not a victory till the end, so. Yeah, yeah, we can try to make it down there. Ain't no different than any other one, no brakes, but it seems to run better than most of the stuff. Yeah. I think it's the first time we've ever tried to cut a donut in one. <laughs> yeah, let's change GoPro batteries, we'll try to make it down there. Let's see if we can make her down to the other shop.
transmission is noisy. I think it's safe to say that we can mark this off as another successful run around the shop. When we found this old Jeep, it had been abandoned for quite some time now, and we really weren't sure of why it was parked. As we got it back to the shop and dug into it a little deeper, we found out that the engine was just locked up solid in it, so it wasn't in near about a shape as some of the motors we've been working with here recently. Once we were able to get it to turn over, well, she just fired right up after that. So we're definitely gonna have to address this transmission a little bit deeper. It's making some sounds that no transmission should ever make, as well as address old brakes on this thing. So all in all, this was a cool vehicle to work on, and we'd love to hear what you guys would do with a project like this around your shop. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, and we'll see you on the next one.